Welcome, this is the UVU men's coach, Coach Chris Curran. And Coach, you've coached UVU for how long? Uh, this is the start of my 12th year at UVU, uh, 11th year as the men's coach. Men's coach. So, yep, quite a, quite a long uh, ride so far and, and hopefully going to keep it going. Excellent. Um, what did you do before coaching? Uh, so I I've pretty much coached my entire life. Uh, I was coaching, um, where I played back in Oklahoma. Um, my, my college coach asked me to be his assistant and, uh, that he would pay for my master's degree while I was, um, the assistant. So, uh, to me, that was a win-win and, and did that for a couple of years while I, while I got my master's degree. And then, um, and then moved out to Utah, and and kind of the rest is history. Well, good, very good. You've you've done well at UVU for the time, and I've seen your players, and they've all done well that I've seen, and they've done well. So, um, absolutely, thank you. Uh, what? So your mentor, your coaches before helped you get to this point. Anything else that helped you get here? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I grew up in Oklahoma and uh, Oklahoma is a very, um, there's a lot of tradition in golf. Uh, some of the um, top universities, uh, college golf, uh, Oklahoma State, Oklahoma, uh, those, those coaches, um, even from a young age, I looked up to those guys and um, you know, some of those guys I still look up to to this day. Um, and so um, I always tell my players that playing college golf is the best four years of your life. And uh, I, I lived that. Um, and uh, to be real honest with you, when I, when I finished my career, I, I didn't want to be done. And so to, uh, my, my whole kind of reasoning for going into coaching was I wanted to stay connected to uh, to golf and to um, these players and, and making them better golfers and um, and then also just you know trying to make them be um, uh, great community members uh, later in life and and just uh, good citizens basically. Yeah, well, that's what a good coach does, and you make them better for when they came in and more beyond just the sport. So absolutely. If, uh, if a high school golfer wants to go play college, what, what do you think they should do while they're in high school to prepare for it? Absolutely. Absolutely. I would, I would recommend uh, them just playing in as many uh, tournaments as they possibly can um, because the only way you get better is to compete and uh, I think the more events that they can play at a national level even um, will prepare them for collegiate golf because I, I think um, there's there's a learning curve at every level right so you're a junior high golfer and then you go to the high school level, there's a learning curve there. And uh, the same as from high school to, to college golf. And then, and then if you go beyond college golf, you're going to be playing professional golf often. And, and there's a learning curve at every, every one of those stages. So I think the more events, the more tournaments, the more experience you get, the, the better you're going to be prepared. Um, for the next level. Yeah, all that practice outside of just with your team, but actually getting in the events, probably just more with mentally and physically as well, so. Absolutely, yep. Um, when, you have call, when you have players come join you right after high school, what do you see that they do physically or throughout your years that helps them get to their next level of competition? Well, hey, I think it kind of goes back to the, that stages. So um, the, the competition level is obviously higher. And when those, those freshmen come in, um, they 
they see the older players and they realize, okay, hey, I was kind of a um, – I was the top dog on my high school team, but now everybody that's on the team is just as good as you. And so the competition level rises um, and you don't want to get left behind. So they, they, you learn a lot from the older guys, but, but also um, I think in college, there's a, a lot more structure. Um, I mean, if you think about it, a lot of the high school golf coaches are, an assistant basketball coach or some random guy that loves golf and, and they just kind of throw you in and say, go play. So I think the structure uh, level is, is, is much more consistent. And then uh, definitely from a fitness level, uh, a, a lot of guys coming into college, they don't really take care of their fitness levels the way that, that they need to be doing for, to be a, a top level collegiate athlete. And so I think just getting those guys in the gym um, and strengthening their body um, uh, on the golf course. I think the, what I've seen is that better structure on more specific what they want to do is can be helping more, more uh, down the line of structured fitness or golf or structured coaching around that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Cause a lot of, a lot of high school players, you know, they may play football as well or basketball as well. And so they're getting maybe strength training that's more geared towards football and not towards golf. So when, when they get to college, it's a much more like golf specific workout that, um, it just helps them more than maybe what the, the football team's doing or the, the basketball team's doing. Yeah. And I think from what we've learned with the research at Titles Performance Institute at TPI is that when it's actually really good for players to not specialize in golf early on, but be well-rounded athletes. But then once you get to college, definitely specialize and they can really hone in on everything because all the other athletic stuff actually helps golfers or later on, as we see in the, uh, among the pros now, a lot of them played multiple sports playing younger than they're better now. So, yeah, absolutely. And, and I would, I think you can specialize, but I, I would, I would, I, I like to see players that have played other sports uh, just because they, they learn the team atmosphere a little better um, than those guys that, that start um, specializing in golf at like, let's say 11, 12, 13 years old. Um, the guys that have played team sports up until high school seem to, um, they just, the, the team atmosphere wise, they're, they're head and shoulders above the guys that have, that have specialized. And I think that that uh, from a team camaraderie standpoint and that kind of thing, um, I like to see it, uh, the, the kids that um, are, are more of a well-rounded athlete than just a golf. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Um, among your, let's see, among your golfers that you've seen over the your years of coaching, what are some of the most common injuries that they come across? Yeah. Uh, I'd like to, i like to say that uh, I don't see a whole lot, but uh, the the realistic um, uh, the realistic thing is mm, a lot of our our injuries come off the golf course of of them um, playing some other random sport, uh, and that's kind of a frustrating thing uh, occasionally as a coach. But the the most common um, ones we see while on the golf course. Uh, usually I feel like lower backs uh, are, are a, a concern and then uh, um, some wrist and uh, just basically they, they hit a shot a little heavy or um, they, there was a root or rock or something under the ground that they didn't know was there and they swing through um, and can you know, injure those, the, the wrist. Um, but I think for the most part and the, the, the swinging action, um, 
probably lower backs and wrists are the the two most common things that we run into uh, with our college players. Yeah, I think that shows that with somebody who's been coached how to swing the proper mechanics for years, then that uh, can eliminate a lot of the back pain that comes that you don't see a whole lot, but you see more of it from they bring the injury to golf rather than the injury came from golf, so they were injured somewhere else outside. Um, and that, I think, leads to just proper mechanics and just learning how to swing properly so that they use their body right. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, it's it's always kind of frustrating to see um, to see players have that lower back flare up and then they tell me, oh, well, it was a basketball injury or a football injury from, you know, four or five years ago. But when it, when it flares up, you know, it's like, okay, hey, we got to get them in the training room um, and start getting some treatment, have them come see you, you know, that kind of stuff uh, to just try to get them back, back healthy again. Yeah. Um, last question I want to ask you is, what, what have you seen to get a – to help your golfers, a lot of golfers want to hit it farther. What, what do you see they want to do? How do you, how do you coach your golfers to hit it farther without injuring themselves? And, and that's probably the million dollar question. Uh, as you've seen the way golf is trending right now, uh, some of the stuff that Bryce and DeChambeau is doing, um, club head speeds in the mid one twenties, um, and and ball speeds over over 200. I mean, it's it's a completely different game now than even you know five years ago. So, um, it's it's kind of that fine line of of trying to get guys to swing harder um, with with also like you said having good mechanics and um, and doing it in a way that you're not going to injure yourself. Some of that can be like rep management um, where they're not hitting just driver after driver after driver um, and just trying to limit the number of drivers that they're hitting uh, and, and getting it to where they're, um, you know, maybe only hitting 10 drivers um, per practice session or something like that to where, the, the strain is a little less on, um, on, on knees and backs and, and just everything that could kind of go wrong, so to speak. Um, so, but there, there are a lot of training aids out there, um, that, uh, that, that we work with, uh, to try to get guys to be swinging faster. Uh, we even do quite a few things in the gym, um, just trying to work on um, just basically getting their speed up uh, because there's uh, some correlation to um, like every mile an hour of, of uh, club head speed equals uh, like close to three yards of, of carry. So there's, there's some correlations there that, um, you know, if you swing at this speed, it should fly this far depending on, you know, where on the club face you're, you're making contact with the ball and, and, and that kind of stuff. So it's, it's a fine line of, of getting them to swing harder without injuring themselves. Yeah. It's, I think it's supposed to show that uh, if you want to do it, don't do it by yourself, but get with a coach or some specific, someone that knows it really well that can help build foundations and then right. keep you within those barriers right so. and and you know you see somebody like uh tiger how he was kind of one of the innovators of of hitting it a long way and and that kind of stuff and his his body hasn't held up and so uh it'll be interesting to see if somebody like bryson who is is swinging it super hard uh if his body will hold up and you know, if, if guys that have kind of jumped on that bandwagon right now, will will quickly jump back off that bandwagon. Um, just saying, Hey, it's not worth it that far if it's going to destroy my body. Yeah. We've seen, we've talked about this before uh, we started recording, but uh, the 
body of the golfer has changed over the past 20 years and then we'll see what will change from here on and what will what will change in the future so what would you recommend as a nutritious snack while you're uh they're they're definitely eating and drinking different things on the golf course what would what would you recommend uh for somebody that that wants to um you know stay hydrated and um have uh, proper nutrition while on the course okay so good nutrition question we're gonna talk more about we're talking more about like competition and everything because recreation i guess you can you're having fun so you can do whatever you want but for recreation and the first thing i'd say would be focusing on hydration and so what i'd say is for let's go off a of body weight we'll go off of a 200 pound player uh, for every 200 pound player so 200 pounds i break that divide that in by two so it's 100 I, I drink 100 ounces of water every day. And so for if you're playing a round of 18 for that day, a quarter of that 100 ounces should be right as you wake up before you drink anything. And this is 100, 100 ounces of pure water, no drinks, no juices or soda or sports drinks or anything. 100 ounces of pure water, a quarter of it should be right as you wake up you're dehydrated when you wake up and then half of it throughout your 18 holes of playing golf okay and then the other quarter would be just throughout the day with meals or anything so taking a 200 pound golfer 25 ounces of it so this year is a 24 ounce uh, bottle from costco just a th th thermo flask so i drink what at least one maybe a little bit more of that in the morning and then two of them for um, 18 holes and then another 24 ounce, 25 ounces throughout meals. Gotcha. Um, and then pre a pre round focusing on breakfast drink, or making sure they have a good, uh, breakfast and you can play around with breakfast, whether you have eggs and bacon and then see how well you bought your body sits with it or how well it sits, sits with your body throughout the day. Um, if it's too heavy, then maybe just drink or uh, eat some eggs and some fruit. You can play around with that, but something that's something that good to uh, start off your day with. During the round, um, it's recommended to eat a little snack every three to four holes or five to six holes, whatever is best for you. And those snacks should be uh, not sugary, so no, no Snickers or chocolate-covered stuff or no sports drinks. You're, um, but more of a seeds, nuts, um, some proteins from jerky is good, and just water as far as hydration. Less, no sports drinks or energy drinks, more water just to keep you hydrated than a lot of water, as you can tell. Right. From what, from what I said earlier. Um, but then after around a good 30 to an hour after, it's good to have a good meal af afterwards to help ref ref refuel your body with good carbs, whether it's rice, some potatoes, or some protein, and some whole grains as well. Um, so that's what, those are good nutrition-wise. Um, another good treat for during round that I forgot would be a, like a trail mix, something that's good, healthy, and uh, protein with some good nuts in it, so. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, use that with, your golfers and next round. So I don't know what, I haven't spoken about what you've done with your team before, but. Yeah, I mean, in the past, uh, a lot of times some fruit like bananas, apples, that kind of stuff. Um, usually something that's um, easy for them to kind of carry around. Uh, we have done jerky in the past, um, granola bars of some kind usually. Um, but you know, I think some of the guys prefer only water. Some of the guys prefer like, you know, Gatorade, Powerade, you know, those kinds of things, which, um, maybe we'll try to steer them clear of those, um, 
but I definitely think um, we, we definitely have players that are on kind of both ends of the spectrum as far as drinking uh, or staying hydrated that, that are better than, than others. Um, you know, we have guys that go through, um, you know, I'd say easily probably a hundred ounces on a 36 hole day, just, and that's no problem. And then there are guys that they, they struggle to get through 25 ounces. So, you know, especially when we're playing in the desert or in the heat, you know, that kind of stuff, I'm, I'm definitely pushing, Hey, make sure you're drinking enough water, stay, stay hydrated just cause you can, you can definitely see the, the perfor like, it's performance related if they're not staying hydrated or not um, keeping their, their um, caloric intake up that they kind of start to decline and, and get um, it affects their performance for sure. And so these are all great things that, that I think I can definitely share with the team and, and uh, make sure that they're, they're staying, um, staying hydrated and staying up with their, their nutrition while on the course. Yeah. I think, uh, out of anything, I think hydration gets overlooked a lot. And so quite a, some of your golfers drink a lot of it and just, uh, going off of that body mass or, uh, your body weight is a good right. gauge to go off of and just drink more water. I think help actually helps a lot. Like you said, with performance, the less high, more hydrate, dehydrated you are, the less power out that you can have and so yeah it's all that. all good stuff good well thanks coach for joining me and we'll hopefully help other golfers in the local area with all yeah, this absolutely and happy to help you talk off anytime okay thanks all right thanks